Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be replacing the front factory component and the tweeter on this 2003 Volkswagen GTI. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to remove the factory six and a half and tweeter up there in the sale panel, replace it with an aftermarket set. Let's get started. Now this install applies to GTIs, R32s, Golf, they're all about the same, most of which will have both the component set and the tweeter up above. Now additionally in this install, um, we have the Monsoon app. You may or may not have the Monsoon app, it just depends on your application. Um, if you have the Monsoon app or don't have the Monsoon app, it'll vary on your wiring configuration just so everything works properly. Now first thing we need to do is get the store panel off. Um, usually you have to remove that the handle cover there's going to be some screws along the bottom there's a screw on here on the left hand side and the door panel should lift on off and then at that point we can then remove the tweeter there up above now the first screw to remove is a Phillips screw here on the left hand side now there's gonna be three t20 torques up here under the door go ahead and remove those Now next here we need to remove a portion of the handle to get the two screws here. Now it does differ on the driver's side, the panel's bigger, but it's the same principle. You gotta remove this because there's gonna be two Phillips screws back behind this panel. Okay. So at this point, the door is really loose. It should lift on off. Next here, we need to disconnect. Disconnect this guy, just pull back on this little, uh, this little lever and then it should unhook. Disconnect your light down below. Alright, so we got this all pulled apart here. Now here is our factory six and a half, and then now we have access to our tweeter. Now our tweeter is also held in with a T20 torque screw. And the rest of the tweeter pocket is held on with clips. So try to relieve them with a panel tool here. You don't want to break it. Okay, two clips. Now you can leave the foam in place. We don't need to take the foam off. You can disconnect our tweeter harness here. Just like that. So there's our tweeter. We can take this guy over to the bench. Down below here is our six and a half inch. Now, unfortunately from factory, they rivet this in. Um, and it's really annoying, there's no screws. And so we'll need to drill those out. Okay, disconnect your harness. All right, we are done with this guy. Now what's left is generally the rest of the rivet. So we can drill these out, you can pound them flat. Um, regardless, they kind of get in the way of our bracket adapter. Um, there is a way around it, you can leave them. So we'll show you what we're gonna do at the bench here to prep our new speaker so it can mount in that factory location. All right, so here at the bench, the parts that we're gonna go with for our install, first and foremost, are the speakers that we've chosen to go with. This is the Alpine Type R, the R-S65C.2. It's essentially the second gen Type R speaker. Um, it's a six and a half mid-range with a one inch tweeter with uh, an inline crossover just for the tweeter. This is a really nice setup. You don't have a big bulky crossover with these. Basically you have your mid-range which has its own built-in crossover here and the tweeter which has an inline one. So it's very versatile whether you have the factory monsoon system or not. This is a really good setup for you. Now if you want to see these speakers a little bit more closely we do have an unboxing and demo on the bench so you can hear them in action. Now to accommodate these in the factory location, we do have some, it looks like a dash kit pad, but it's not. Um, it's a 
little spacer here. Essentially, this little half inch spacer will bring the speaker out enough so it clears the lift mechanism within the door. Now, this also comes with a little bit of hardware here. So in case you want to drill out those pop rivets completely and use these holes here, these four countersunk holes, you can actually use the hardware with the little, uh, basically it's the version of a nut that goes back behind it to mount this in the location. What we're gonna do is just use new screws and attach this securely right to the sheet metal. Now as for wiring, this harness here, which we can link down in the description, essentially allows you to plug into the factory wiring and this end will plug into your new mid-range. Now there isn't any sort of adapter for the tweeter. Now we're not gonna actually use the tweeter line in our application, we're bypassing the monsoon amp, so we just need this guy. Um, but you can tap into the tweeter speaker wire to power your tweeter if you're retaining the monsoon amp. So you'd run this off the tweeter line, this off the mid-range line, and it would function just as so. If you don't have the monsoon amp and you just have a single um, in parallel set of wires, you can high hook it up either way and it's gonna work just fine. Now what we're gonna do is take this apart. We're actually gonna mount our tweeter in the factory location. We're gonna put a little glue to hold it in. Um, yeah, we like to actually use a little bit of hot glue. It can be removed down the road and uh, it's not super sticky, but it'll actually have a nice strong bond. Um, we don't need the factory wiring because again, we're not retaining the factory tweeter wiring. We're gonna be using this guy instead since we're gonna be sending a full range signal from our bypassed amplifier um, into our mid-range line. What we're gonna do is start prepping the tweeter, get everything mounted, then we'll head over to the car to get this guy mounted and uh, show you what that looks like. All right, so what we've done here is we went ahead and glued that all in. It's just all setting up here, but that's about it. It actually seats really well and the glue will just keep it in place. And then you got the foam behind it that'll actually keep it nice and snug. Now this line will run down and connect into one end of our crossover and the other end of the crossover, again, this is where it differs between whether you have a monsoon or not in the way you hook it up. You can connect the input here right to the uh, tweeter harness or because we're sending a full range uh, signal to our speakers anyways with our new aftermarket amplifier on the back of our mid-range you have two sets of terminals that acts like a um, distribution so we're going to hook our tweeter into one of these sets and then our input to the other set so that's the way we're going to wire ours today um, we're going to zip tie and mount this in the door and this will feed our mid-range and our tweeter the signal from our aftermarket amplifier located in the factory location of the monsoon app so let's head to the car now basically we're done with everything here we're going to grab our four self tapper screws and our bracket adapter start getting everything installed okay so we're back here now you notice we actually never actually finished milling those out because what we can do is with our bracket adapter since we're tapping new new holes anyways it'll actually fit right on right over those fortunately with the spacer here and i also put a little hole on this side so we can feed our our speaker wire through so it doesn't get pinched so let's go ahead and get this all seated Grab our harness adapter, we're gonna feed it through the hole that we created, just like that. Now our tweeter crossover right here, what we're gonna install, so this end goes to the tweeter itself, this end is our input side, and since we're gonna snag the full range signal just off the terminals of our mid-range, we're gonna feed that also through that hole. We can already just go ahead and grab our harness adapter and plug it on in, just like that. Okay. So we have now our tweeter crossover, which we'll just kind of set up aside for now. What we need to do is mount up our mid-range. Now, the holes that come here, they're rather large and any standard little screw won't bite into that. So we had to be creative and we found some of these screws that are a little thicker here. Generally, we use these to mount up radios and dash kits and we have a ton of these left over from all our builds over the years. We got extra long ones 
um, that will bite really well within this bracket adapter. So we're gonna use those in our application today. So we're gonna grab our mid-range, go ahead and get our terminals all hooked up. There's the first set, let's grab our tweeter terminals, just like that, okay. Now, we're gonna go ahead, we can put it down, it just makes it a little tight, so we're gonna kinda put it off to the side here. Okay, so we got all four screws in, it's nice and sturdy. Now at this point, we need to install our tweeter. Okay, so now we are ready to install our tweeter up above. Our glue is all nice and set up. It's nice and sturdy, and it's gonna have some plenty of pressure back behind with the factory foam here. Now we're gonna zip tie all this extra length of wire. But right now we're gonna feed it kind of down below here. Okay, snap it back into place. Okay, we're gonna grab a screw. Go ahead and put that in. Okay, so we plugged in our tweeter here. Now we need to obviously clean up some wiring. So let's go ahead and grab some zip ties and get it all cleaned up. All right, so we got everything clean up here. We got everything zip tied, nice and clean. And at this point of time, we've done a test. Everything's functioning normally. Let's go ahead and reassemble the door panel. All right, so that's about it. We've got the door panel all back on, all reassembled here. Everything is working great. We double checked to make sure the windows and locks, all the lights, everything is working as it should and is intended. That's about it for this install. Like I said, the driver's side is gonna be very similar, except for the handle comes off there as we showed you before to expose three screws on that side. Other than that, it's identical. Now, if you wanna see more install videos on this model year GTI Golf or R32, we'll link those videos down in the description for you. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. We will see you in the next video.